Welcome. In this video, you will learn how port cities have adapted over centuries to changing political and economic situations, combining technical innovation with specific governance systems and urban cultures, creating shapes and structures that can facilitate future urban adaptations. We will focus first on the time period until the 1960s, thus before containerization and automation and before port and city moved apart. The adaptation of ports, waterfronts and coastlines, but also of port cities and their hinterlands to future challenges, will require ingenuity and an integrated perspective on water as a shared resource. As contemporary challenges of climate change, migration and particularly global water rise challenge our coastlines, the long history of port cities, their working ports and waterfronts, which are at the forefront of these challenges, may provide us with insights into urban resilience. Port cities have a long history of rapid transformation and recovery, and this video explores select examples. Cities have come into existence for a multitude of reasons, over thousands of years as capitals, as economic or religious centers, as university hubs, as infrastructure nodes, or as port cities. Many of these reasons were part of the growth of Istanbul, for example. The city, formerly called Constantinople, is shown here in Byzantine times. Easy access to navigable water and the existence of natural harbors has given rise to numerous cities on rivers and seas around the world. London, for example, has been a port city since the first century. The city became the heart of an empire that ruled the waves for some 500 years, with ships crowding the River Thames. Here is how the city looked at the beginning of this development, around 1560. Water transportation has long facilitated the transport of goods and people around the world. This map, painted on a wall of a trading house in Tallinn, Estonia, shows the trading networks around the Baltic Sea that have also left their imprint on buildings. Here is a typical multifunctional house in Tallinn that combined trading, storing and living. These buildings resembled each other in cities around the Baltic and North Sea, as you can see here in examples from Hamburg and Lübeck, Germany, or from Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Amsterdam has a long history as a trading city, going back to the 13th century. This was particularly notable in the 17th century, when the city was a global trade center. Other networks had their own centers too. Venice, for example, controlled trade with Asia and connected to Tang Chang'an via the Silk Road. Located at the intersection between water and land transportation, port cities have thus grown as places of transshipment to take advantage of water access. Each adapted its form and function to unique local geographies, topographies, political, economic, or historical situations, ex as exemplified here through the city of Aden in Yemen, or Havana in the Caribbean. The function of port cities goes beyond that of transshipment, storage, and land-sea connection. These cities are also the sites of headquarters, small and big, including the imposing structures of the East India Company in London or the Dutch East India Company in Amsterdam. Such headquarter buildings highlighted the company's importance as home, but also throughout their respective empires. In Canton, today's Guangzhou, China, for example, the waterfront served as the business card for foreign traders or factors. They designed the company headquarters in classical European styles and marked them with national or company flags for all arriving ships to be seen. 
support activities often transcend the areas dedicated to the transshipment of goods and the waterfronts. Traders and other people associated with shipping develop living and leisure spaces throughout the urban area, connecting the port often to the entire city. Each waterfront is different, and its select atmosphere contributes to the construction of local identities and imagery, as seen here in the port of Piraeus. Ships travel the sea on diverse and often changing routes, allowing for easy adaptation to transforming political and economic situations in the foreland, as this map of the British Empire suggests. To be part of shipping networks, port have to provide appropriate facilities for similar and evolving ship sizes and types, depth and containers. In the case of Bristol shown here, that meant overcoming challenges such as tidal fluctuations of nine meters. To keep their place in port rankings, port cities had to adapt their facilities rapidly to new shipping technologies and forms of administration. Controlling water, transforming coastlines and hinterlands, infrastructure was a key to port survival and an issue of national importance. Once rivers and shores became too crowded, rendering transshipment impractical, governments and shipping companies built new docks to control water heights despite tidal changes, as was the case in London, where a group of powerful businessmen lobbied Parliament to allow the creation of the West India Dock Company. Authorized in 1799 by the West India Dock Act, the docks opened in 1802. Liverpool similarly developed large docklands with warehouses. Many cities followed the London example. Others, like Hamburg, opted for tidal harbors. Here, the Zantur Kai in 1866. This allowed for unloading despite changing river, river levels, whereas docks would have strangled harbor traffic. The growing number of steamships required yet another round of transformations. By 1830, the construction of Brunswick Wharf in London provided a place for the growing number of steamships. There, they no longer had to wait for the tide to enter the dock, but could cast off at will. Companies built even more new docks. In London, the Victoria Dock was directly connected to train lines, and the Royal Albert Dock had almost five kilometers of quays. Finger piers, that is, raised structures built into the water, characterized American ports, such as those in New York or San Francisco. The long individual piers gave large ships greater available k lengths. Industrialization in the 19th and 20th centuries introduced further changes and initiated the separation of port and city. The former multifunctional trade buildings gave way to monofunctional areas for shipping, administration, and housing. The city of Hamburg moved some 24,000 inhabitants, rich and poor, to allow for the construction of a warehouse district, the Speicherstadt, an innovative storage area with integrated sea and land access, including direct connections to railway alongside the piers, as illustrated in this section of 1888. Uh, the presence of the warehouses district led to the next door construction of an office district, which came to include the world famous Chile House. Both areas have recently been recognized as UNESCO World Heritage Sites. By the mid 19th century, the telegraph made possible the rapid exchange of information. It gave shipping companies advanced knowledge on the whereabout of their ships and facilitated preparation in the ports. As new technologies became available, politicians and engineers also changed the waterways. The opening of new thoroughfares shortened trip, trips extensively. New cities became dominant, others lost their prominence. The creation of the Suez Canal in 1869, for example, went hand in hand with the development of three new planned port cities on the Suez Canal, Port Said, Ismailia, and Suez. The cities became cosmopolitan centers attracting migrants from various backgrounds 
and serving as places for the exchange of goods, people, and ideas. Other examples include the Kiel Canal in North Germany that links the North Sea to the Baltic Sea over a distance of 98 kilometers, and the Panama Canal built in 1914 that shortened the way from the Pacific to the Atlantic, thus from the American West Coast to the East Coast. New technologies and means of transshipment, such as bigger cranes, led to the recurrent reconstruction of facilities. Starting in the 1960s, containerization, first imagined by Malcolm McLean, an American transport entrepreneur, led to the wholesale restructuring of shipping networks, of trade patterns, port facilities, port city hierarchies, and urban form. Whereas historically, port and city were intimately connected, with industrialization, the two grew apart. 